Hello, everybody. So I wanted to make a video today about a specific cryptocurrency project that has educated me about the specific architecture surrounding blockchain technology. And also on top of that, what is occurring in regards to not just the architecture of blockchain, but the trilemma that blockchains have been yet to solve. And this is a major issue that I see in cryptocurrency. And the reason why I feel Syscoin has been able to realize this is because of a presentation that I want to share with you that educated me about blockchain. And I feel like it's very important to share this information to all of you. I know this is not what I usually do in regards to my channel, but I think it's paramount to educate people on why blockchain technology and blockchain architecture is still in its infancy, why we can't solve scalability, why we can't solve uh, decentralization, and why we can't solve security all in one blockchain. So I've learned a lot about Syscoin. And we're going to talk about smart contracts, the Bitcoin merge mine, and ZK rollup specifically. And I am very excited to teach you guys about what e <clears throat> excuse me what ZK rollups are. But first, I want to talk about this presentation that highlights this. So, what's the blockchain trilemma and an ideal architecture for a blockchain? So it's very simple. The blockchain trilemma is basically Decentralization, security, and scalability. But the problem here is that no blockchain has been able to successfully solve these, these three issues in one chain. You could have two out of the three. You could have decentralization and security, but not scalability. You could have scalability and decentralization, but not security. You could have security and scalability, but not decentralization. So we have this issue in blockchain technology that has been occurring since the inception of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin. We've had these major issues that blockchain faces that has not been solved yet. And I find this to be a massive issue. And I feel like projects like Syscoin that understand this trilemma are the ones that are going to succeed in the future by amalgamating these three principles together through their infrastructure, through their architecture, and through their updates. And I'm going to get into that as we go along. But I want to talk first about the design of blockchains. So many of you look at blockchains probably with proof of work, proof of stake, the notion of decentralization versus centralization versus with scalability versus lack of scalability, security versus non-security. But there are two blockchain architectures that I want to share with you guys. So it's monolithic versus modular. Now, what are these two and what separates them from one another? So how are blockchains de uh, designed? Excuse me. Monolithic. On one hand, you have Bitcoin, which used and tried and tested proof of work and Nakamoto consensus. Now, every node checks everything before trusting and makes no trade-off. So this is supposed to be the gold standard for blockchain security and decentralization. But unfortunately, we have seen the, <clears throat> excuse me, we have seen Bitcoin have an inflation bug. We've seen Bitcoin having to roll its chain back. We've seen so much power in the hands of mining farms now that the argument that Bitcoin is decentral decentralized is, um, I think it's a foregone conclusion by now. And I find that to be an issue because this is the ethos of cryptocurrency. It's supposed to be peer-to-peer, -peer, supposed to be decentralized. It's supposed to have a value that is against centralization. And I think that this is very, very important that we look at this from a perspective on why these blockchains don't solve these problems. So then on the other hand, you have chains with sets of nodes acting under authorization and proof of stake models. So you see Ethereum's moving to proof of stake. Solana's proof of stake. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other projects like Phantom are proof of stake. So there are many projects out there that are proof of stake. In this model, the aim is to achieve improvements to base layer performance, higher sp speeds, lower fees, and the ability to handle more volume. And this is true. We see lower fees traditionally in proof of stake models as opposed to proof of work models. 
And we also see, in my opinion, in proof of stake models, increased authority of governance from the actual individuals who hold the token because they are the ones that delegate their project, their coins to validators in accordance to who they feel ensures public trust, public responsibility, and public assurance that they will continue to work to see this blockchain not only grow, but also most importantly, validate block so it does not block so it does not halt. So while there are many monolithic chains that provide great features and a great UX, the trilemma lives on with trade-offs that are often substantial, usually realized under the burden of adoption. So <clears throat> one of the major reasons why blockchain has not been mass adopted, in my opinion, is because these three aspects of blockchain have not been solved successfully. No blockchain, in my opinion, has been able to solve decentralization while simultaneously solving security and scalability. It just hasn't happened. And it's unfortunate because it is a very, very needed, needed conclusion to bring these different aspects together into one chain. And it has not happened yet. So you have monolithic chains. Bitcoin and today's proof of work Ethereum are examples of monolithic blockchains. They provide a great system for decentralization and security, arguably. Like I said before, Bitcoin has had its issues where they had an inflation bug and they had to roll back the chain. So even then, monolithic blockchains don't provide the security that we can speak in absolutes. So sure, they provide security. They do, but they're not infallible. So they lack, and then at the same time, they lack scalability. Bitcoin and Ethereum are extremely slow. Ethereum's <clears throat> transaction speeds are incredibly slow. You have an incredibly expensive. Same thing with Bitcoin. They're incredibly slow. And the problem is also you have monolithic proof of stake chains like Solana that may handle higher volumes and run fast and cheap, but they trade off proven decentralization and security. Solana is notorious to be known as centralized. Solana is able to halt chains at will, halt the chain at will, and it's done it numerous times. There's been massive exploits that have happened on Solana. So the unfortunate aspect here with a proof of stake paradigm and a proof of stake model in regards to, for example, Solana, is that they don't solve the trilemma in regards to security. And that's a major issue because it's not only Solana that's been hacked. There have been numerous other exploits that have occurred on other blockchains. I don't want to get into the many blockchains that have had ex exploits because that's not the purpose of this video. But the purpose of this video is just to educate on the notion of monolithic and modularity. And you know why this doesn't succeed? Because they all try to accomplish these properties in one spot. They try to they try they try their best to solve the blockchain trilemma and they just don't. So you have a modular paradigm which is separate the concerns into layers that work together to provide scalability while preserving decentralization and security. You have a consensus layer, a data layer, and an execution layer. And then you have side chains that have become incredibly popular that are attempting to stop this burden of over congestion and higher fees that have occurred on many major chains. This is why, in my opinion, projects like Matic, now known as Polygon, have grown to be very successful. So basically a side chain is an independent chain linked to another main layer one blockchain. Side chains usually have their own set of rules, rely in part on their own security, and yet in some ways anchor to the security of the main chain. These two blockchains have to communicate. They have to. So you have layer twos then. It's a protocol and network that is integrated with a layer one, specifically designed for offloading certain activity to an off-chain system useful for scaling. The layer twos can help layer ones by handling transactions off-chain. The beauty of layer twos is that its activity inherits layer one security, even though the activity occurs elsewhere, and layer two scaling has the least trade-offs, which can make blockchain tech mass adoptable. Now, why does this matter to Syscoin? And what I've learned from Syscoin, from interviewing the founder, Jag, from interviewing <clears throat> one of my friends who's a business dev at, named Alex, who is, the in, who is the individual who introduced me to Syscoin and why I think and ZK Rollups are such a 
necessary solution and why I think this is a very, very needed solution for so many different chains. And I think that Syscoin actually has the first mover advantage through, un through basically pioneering the necessity of ZK rollups. Now, what are these uh, ZK fruit rollups? So simply put, rollups consolidate many computations or transactions, just to make it simple, into a single proof or statement of account which is then published to another ledger, usually the layer one that the, that the ZK rollup is connected to in a single transaction. So they involve regular smart contracts on a mainnet, and they design to basically serve as a relay between the main chain and a layer two protocol with nodes serving specific roles. The interoperability between layer one and layer twos has the effect of reducing congestion on the layer one, which helps to keep fees low and improve performance which also enabling the layer one to provide security for a much larger body of activity. To oversimplify, it's kind of like Lightning Networks, but for smart contracts, and it's probably more secure. So what's the solution that solves this trilemma? What I have learned from Syscoin is something that I think other blockchain projects that are launching should really take a look at because it's very, very, very interesting to me on their solution. And Syscoin has massive staying power. They've been around since 2015. They have been working since 2015. This chain has been around for a very long time. This is not a new chain. This is a chain that constantly needs to adapt, constantly needs to change, and constantly needs to adopt adopt new principles in order to survive. And I think that they're onto something here. So they are a security focused blockchain with a modular design that provides finality, data availability, and is ready to solve the trilemma through layer two. So their main point is that they are the best of Bitcoin and Ethereum in all in one place. Basically what Syscoin is, is a proof of work and is merge mined with Bitcoin. It's roughly 25 to 30% of Bitcoin's hash rate, which supports Syscoin, and it's growing. Its layer one consists of two integrated blockchains. The core is the Syscoin blockchain itself. Running in tandem with that is Syscoin's NEVM chain, which is 100% compatible with standard EVM, and I find that to be amazing. Syscoin is designed to provide layer two roll-up solutions with the kind of finality and data availability they require in order to function more securely and efficiently without resorting to proof of stake layer ones. So I think the reason why Syscoin, to go back to Syscoin, understands this is because of the fact that they have been around for so long. They understand the necessity of ZK roll-ups they understand how to fix the blockchain trilemma. And I appreciate that because when you see individuals that have this much experience, this many partners, a roadmap to ZK rollups, amalgamating the top two print the, the top two blockchains basically into one chain, I think you have a force to be reckoned with. And I find this to be very necessary for all these for all new blockchains launching i think it's very important to realize the value of this trilemma of this notion of scalability of this ability to grow of this ability to adapt for this ability to launch in a reliable and hassle-free setting and that's why i think personally syscoin Though many of you have seen it as maybe an older project, just because something's older does not make it less valuable and does not make it not adaptable. Adaptation is what allows blockchains or anything in this world to thrive and survive. And I find a lot of respect in this blockchain specifically. Is it in the top 100? No. But you know what it is in the top 100, in my opinion, and in the top 10, in my opinion? Not in regards to valuation, but in regards to understanding. They understand the trilemma that blockchain faces, and they understand, in their opinion, and their view, and it's yet to be seen with ZK rollups yet, but if they can implement ZK rollups on their chain and successfully solve the trilemma, 
I think a lot of different protocols have a lot to learn from this chain, especially because it's been around for so long and has seen so much. When you're able to see so much in life and in, in an emerging asset class where projects come and go, but a project like this that's been around for more than more than six years has been able to adapt, grow, and thrive and is now realizing that one of the fundamental functions that needs to be solved is this trilemma. And it could be solved through ZK rollups. And I'm very curious to see how this happens. If you guys haven't yet, I have a video. I have numerous videos on my channel about Syscoin. I've had Alex, a business developer on with me. And I've also had Jagdeep, who is the founder and president of the Syscoin Foundation, who educated me on this. And I just wanted to make this short video just to share this with you guys, because I find it to be massively valuable. And I think that we need to learn from pre-existing blockchains because that understand what needs to come next. And since they already have existed for a while, who's to say that they can't? They can't thrive and survive and become more adopted. And I think Syscoin is one of those underrated blockchains that do not get the the um, the limelight they deserve because of the fact that they don't have VC backing necessarily, and just because they don't have VC backing makes them not worthy of looking at when I see a coin like this and I see a blockchain like this and I say, this is an actual project that is still building. This is a project that understands this crucial problem that has yet to be fixed. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think on Syscoin. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the blockchain trilemma, if it's ever going to be solved. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on monolithic versus modular blockchain. I hope this video has given you some sense of education about Syscoin, about the future of blockchain, what ZK rollups are, and how ZK rollups can effectively change the landscape of blockchain technology. So I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. So let me know in the comments what you guys think.